As for the Muslims, since the fall of Taliban in Afghanistan, the production of opium, the main ingredient of heroin, has increased by 70%, amounting to nearly 8,000 tonnes last year. This increase coincides with the American occupation. The main producers of the drug are the Northern Alliance, the allies of the USA. At least 25 million people around the globe are addicted to drugs. And we as Muslims have a large part to play in that. Muslims pay a part in the growing of drugs, the smuggling of drugs, the distribution of drugs, the selling of drugs, the taking of drugs. And yet we are instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Quran that we are the best generation sent to mankind, the best nation sent to mankind. And our sunnah is the sunnah of the Rasul and he was sent as a mercy to mankind. So we have a large part to blame for the drug addiction in our own community. Because I can take you outside this masjid right now, brothers and sisters, and take you 20 yards down the road, and I guarantee you I'll find a, a Muslim strung out on heroin that was more than likely produced by another Muslim in Afghanistan. And we should remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He records our deeds and the effects of our deeds. Now, just like black people in America, many Muslim areas are flooded by drugs and gangs. Now, it's no mistake. So I wonder who really is bringing drugs in our community. Is it the CIA, the Cocaine Import Agency, or MI5? Or as I call them, murder everyone in five seconds. <laughs> Gangster rap, the real story. When I first come to Islam, one of the biggest record labels that was on the up was Death Row Records. And the two main rappers that was part of it was Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. But when I give you the information today, you'll understand that they were nothing more than pawns in a game. They were a part of the fantasy. Now, common history tells us that Shug Knight was the owner of death row records through money that he accumulated through gang and drug activities. Here's the reality. About 2% of people involved in the rap industry are real gangsters, meaning the rest are fake. It's an image. They're actors. Here is a real gangster involved in rap. David Kenner. He is the real owner of Death Row Records, not Shug Knight, David Kenner. David Kenner was the representative of one of America's biggest drug dealers by the name of Michael Harris. His street name was Harry O. And Harry O owned Death Row Records. That David Kenner said, give me the running of the record company and I will run it for you while you're in prison. But what he did is David Kenner then actually stole Death Row Records from Michael Harris. Now he knew as a white Jew, that he obviously can't come up front and start sagging his trousers and going, oh, yo, yo, yo. So he said he needed someone to front Death Row Records, which was Shug Knight. And they invented a whole story that he was involved in the Bloods gang in Los Angeles, when in reality, Shug Knight was a failed American football player. He'd never been near gangsters. Maybe he'd met them, but he wasn't a gangster himself. But there's more. David Kenner is the lawyer for an Israeli gangster in America by the name of Hal Wayenken. Funny name. He is a member of a gang in America called the Jerusalem Group. Kenner was also tar charged with tax evasion in America, meaning he never paid his taxes. So if you want to look at a real gangster in rap, it's David Kenner. It's not Tupac, it ain't Snoop, it ain't Dre, and it definitely ain't Shug Knight. Here is a fake gangster, Dr. Dre 2007. 
Now, just look at that image. The moodiness, the eyes. If you look at me, I'm going to pull my gun and shoot you. Here's Dr. Dre in the 1980s. Is that a dress? Is that a dress? And as it says, unfortunately we can't see too well, but I'll read it for you. Lipstick, fake tooth, just like him. Sequins, stethoscope, flaming. And as it says at the bottom, ain't nothing but a she thing. So this is the fantasy that they give you, brothers and sisters, that these people are hardcore gangsters coming up from the streets, and here they are running around looking like transvestites. That's real gangster. And it was said by the great Saeed Qutb, Rahim Allah, that he said, standing on the periphery of this miserable mankind is a group of exploiters whose sole aim is to profit from other people's miseries and confusions. These gangsters consist of usurers, film producers, manufacturers of fashions, and publishers of pornographic books and magazines. The real gangsters are the record labels who continuously and perpetually put out the records that people become addicted to. And one more graphic image before we close, inshallah, ta'ala, brothers and sisters. And this is a message to the brothers not here today. I send this message to the brothers on street. I send this message to the sisters on street. I send this message to the brothers in the crack houses. I send this message to the sisters in the crack houses. What will you do on a day of judgment? When four-year-old Tawfiq Hussein asks you, where was you to defend me? You could raise your arm to stab another Muslim. You could raise your arm to beat another Muslim. You could raise your arm to sell and to put that crack pipe to your mouth. But you couldn't even raise your voice to defend your brothers and sisters in Philistine, in Palestine. What will you say to the mother of four-year-old Ilham Asr? When on the day of judgment, she screams to Allah, Ya Allah, where was the Ummah of Muhammad to save my son to be being killed by Zion Nazis in Israel? Where were you? And what will you say? Oh Allah, I was on a crack pipe. Oh, it got me too hard. So there, inshallah, ta'ala, brothers and sisters, I hope that this talk has been educational for you. But one thing I want to say, Alhamdulillah, many of us here today are practicing Allah's deen, Alhamdulillah. But it is paramount and important that you take this message that I've given here today to brothers and sisters outside. Because they are the victims of a fantasy that is being perpetuated as reality. And they need to understand that the only reality in this life is the day of judgment, is the grave, and is Jannah and Jehannam, heaven and hell. I hope, inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, I have not offended anybody. And if I have, I ask your forgiveness. I ask Allah to forgive me for the mistakes I may have made, because surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of all imperfections. I ask you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah, to make dua for me and ask Allah to forgive me of the mistakes I may have made. It has been a pleasure to stand here before you and to give this lecture. And I hope it has been beneficial to you in some small way, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. For those of you who would like to contact me, my contact details are up on the screen, inshallah ta'ala. As I say, thank you once again, and thank you to the brothers and sisters from Noor Productions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.